play shooters. It's that time again. That time again. These guys aren't just anybody. They're good. It's time for the Dead Pair Podcast with Jason Rambo. Is your brain hear what your mouth is saying? And Sean Alley. He's large and in charge. Here to bring you all things sporting plays from the ins and outs. Tips and tricks, news and gossip from pro shooters, service and industry specialists, coaches, clubs, and more. Often imitated, never duplicated. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only. Welcome, everyone, to the Dead Pair Podcast. Yeah, what do you think, Sean Alley? We're back in here having fun, and I forgot to lock the door again. Yes, you did. Well, first and foremost, we are energized by KLMO Game Board US, and we've got one of their star shooters here. That's right. Griffin. What's up, Griffin? How? <laughs> How are you? Good, man. How you doing? Doing well. I, I see you finally made the track down from that place up north. We won't, yep. we won't go over there, but... <laughs> finally. <laughs> finally. <laughs> So this is awesome. We've got Griffin Howe with mom and dad in studio. Say hi, mom and dad. Come on. Don't be shy. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, Griffin, exciting news, man. You just picked up Game Board as a sponsor. I did. That's really awesome. fortunate. Well, congratulations. Grateful for it. How you liking them shells? I love them. I don't think I'd change. <laughs> they're, they're great, man. They crush targets. Yeah, they're awesome. I just had a guy call me yesterday. He was asking about um, rhino chokes. And... I told him that I've done a lot of patterning and all that stuff, and my gun patterns best with rhino chokes and the number eight white golds. Do that. I just, uh, absolutely love it. I mean, I've, I've dusted more tar- – when I actually can hit a target, I smoke it more with that than any other show. Yep, we've tested, uh, like, reloads and white golds, and always seems like white golds pattern better. Yeah, for sure. Gotcha. Sean, well, that's, Sean likes his seven and a half, so he's uh, like, yeah. I like to reach out and touch him. So yeah, I, I love the seven and a halfs. <laughs> They're all good. I don't think you can go wrong with no. white yeah. no matter what the recipe. So Griffin, for those that don't know you, tell us how you got started in sporting clays. So I got started with a small local club in Manchester, Michigan, called the Manchester Young Guns, and at the the time they were kind of mainly like trap and skeet, mm-hmm. and so my parents uh, signed me up and um, went to my first practice and started shooting trap for. First about year, mm-hmm. and um, second year, moved into ch- skeet and sporting clays, and started to realize how much I like sporting clays. Right. So I started. I think it was eight years old. So. And how old are you now? I'm 14. And he just absolutely smokes us every time. Yeah, we squad yeah. With yeah him. We've shot with him with him before, and it's uh, yeah, it's everything we can do to keep up with him, and it still can't. So. Right. So, um, you've accomplished a lot already. What are, what are some of your favorite accomplishments? What's some of the big ones for you? Mainly moving to master class at 13. That's yeah. probably my biggest accomplishment. And the other accomplishment that I really uh, really am thankful for is getting over, like, the mental game, mental part of the game. Yeah. I'm still working on it, but it's still – I'm happy about that. Right. Oh, that's a big part of everybody. I mean, no matter what age you are, the mental side of this sport – once you have the basics and the fundamentals down, I mean, that's that's the challenge. That's yeah, what everybody has to wrestle with. Yep. I've always still sometimes struggle with it, but just. No, we all do. Don't trying worry. Trying to get over it. <laughs> yeah, I haven't even begun to figure it out yet. So when you do, let me know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you're working with Wendell. Wendell yes. Wendell Cherry. Yep. Um, how's that been? Uh, I, it's been going great. The communication is awesome. Like him and I kind of connect and I we understand each other. So it's it's really nice to. Have Wendell as my coach. Yeah, I mean, I could see it, you know, even in your pre-shot, you know. Yep. I, I see a lot of similarities like you and Tom C. and Wendell. You could see it, you know. And how long have you been with Wendell? I've been with Wendell since 2019, so it'd be going on my third year. Okay. I believe. And prior to that, did you have any other coaching or anything from, um, from anybody? Well, okay, I started off, like, my grandpa used to be kind of like my coach, and then mm-hmm. a guy in Brooklyn, Michigan named Carmine McRoberts, he really helped me, and I would not be where I am now without Carmi. And then I um, took a couple, le- uh, took one lesson from Pat Liskey, just kind of um, learning the main things like angles and things like that. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's the important thing that most people need to realize when they get into the sport. Coaching is so huge for your game. If you can get a hold of somebody that knows what they're doing and knows how to watch you and figure out what you're doing, you'll make progress so much faster in the game. Than I if, think it's than the only doing. shortcut. Yeah, it is really the you only know. shortcut to this game. 
Yes, yeah. coaching definitely really helped me, and I would not be anywhere near where I am right now if it was not for coaches. Gotcha. Well, you're also a member of the SCTP, uh, and then, but at the same time, you're also shooting registered targets for the NSCA. One of the hot questions we ask all the time, and it, we probably have all kinds of different answers for this, but why do you think more youth shooters don't participate in the NSCA? Well, that's hard, but I think why youth shooters don't is because they they want to compete against people of their own age because they're sure I guess intimidated by people older than than them because a lot of the times you're competing against everyone from ages eight to say ninety. I mean, sure, there's a big variety of ages in there. But at the same time, I mean, you can make the testament that hey, I'm out there shooting against old guys all day long and kicking their butts just like me and Jason. So <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I mean, you know, you know, it's just always curious, and I get that. I mean, I get the intimidation factor with older people and shooting around your own youth, your, your own age group. Uh, I mean, that makes total sense. I'm just, we're just curious. I mean, uh, obviously the SCTP is its own thing and <clears throat> you have all that competition going on, but I guess, you know, your, your next logical step is to go into the, into the NSCA and start shooting registered targets. If you're going to be really involved with the sport, right? Correct. Correct. Gotcha. And then the other thing is I'm still c- trying to get used to it is kids um, now aren't like, I guess wouldn't say used to talking to some people that are older than them, like trying to communicate with adults. And it's, I mean, still getting tough to get used to, Mm -hmm. but that's another big factor. Well, there's all kinds of factors for that too. I think the cell phone has kind of killed communication oh. skills for, oh, yeah. for your Good generation and, yep. and others that are a that, lot that's, younger. We could do a whole other podcast. Right, yeah, but we ain't got <laughs> enough time. We ain't got enough time for that. <laughs> so, Griffin, one of the things that I think is really huge for you, whenever I see you, you know, mom, dad, grandpa, sometimes it's one of them, sometimes it's all of them. Um, and by the way, I've seen pictures of your sister shooting here lately. Little... Uh, sibling rivalry going on there or is she just really enjoying it she just she, i mean i wish she would shoot some shoot more but she more just shoots for fun and I, I i want her to get out there and do it more she only she only shoots like i don't know maybe five times a year really it's not much well the point of my question was is do you think it's brought you guys together closer as a family oh 100 percent, 100 percent closer as family and this is where i'm going to drag mom and dad into this so you guys are going to have to speak up a little bit here but um <laughs> Mom, what, what's your take on it? Do you think it's really helped you guys as a family kind of bond a little bit? It's kind of fun to travel to the shoots and stuff together? Absolutely. I uh, do a lot of my traveling with Griff and my dad, and I feel so blessed as a mom to be able to spend time, you know, with my son, and, yeah. and it's quality time while, we, you know, yes, we're traveling, and we're not doing any sightseeing, but we get lots of time, and I think it's really fun to watch Griffin and my dad develop this best friend relationship that sometimes a lot of grandsons and uh, grandfathers don't get. Yeah. That's awesome. uh, And it's very family friendly. It's, you know, we can bring my mom along and, you know, out to the course and we can shoot as an entire family, grandparents, siblings, you know, my brother will come. And I know my, uh, sister-in-law and brother-in-law and their son shoot and so it's fun very cool yeah, yeah. and our, our experience has been you know going to the sctp events and stuff there's not a nicer group of kids out there i mean they're all very polite yes ma'am no ma'am yes sir no sir thank you please and thank you i mean it's just i don't know what it is but people that are teaching their kids about gun safety and the responsibility that comes with that it seems like everything else kind of goes hand in hand they're great kids i mean griffin's absolutely fantastic so. well you know the, the one of the things i love most about Mom and dad and sporting clays and stuff like that is, you know, I, I, I've been involved in a lot of other sports and, you know, you see maybe it's dad standing on the side of the track or maybe it's mom standing at the edge of the ball field just screaming her gizzards out, just, you know. <laughs> and I don't mean in a good way. I mean, I, I've seen it go the other way, you know, yeah. yelling and screaming yeah. at the kid, you can do better than that and this is ridiculous and if you don't get better, I'm going to just sell the bike. And, and that's know. why it's hard to get referees sometimes. Yeah, well, well, maybe that's what it is, but. I never, ever, ever have seen anything like that on a sporting clays course. And no. maybe it's happened and I just don't know about it, but I've never seen it. No, I mean, most of the time, any any kind of uh, bad time, I guess, that a, a, a youth shooter is going through, usually they get pulled aside and they get a pep talk or, you know, whatever. And, it, and it's, it's oftentimes not even the mom or the dad. A lot of times it's fellow shooters. I mean, I've I've given pep talks to, to young shooters. I know you have too. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's always about encouragement. And it's like, hey, there's always the next time. It's Nobody's going to live or die because of this, right? It's, right. A, it's a sport. So you just got to kind of keep it in check. 
Well, and I think if parents, you know, instill that in their kids, what you just said, that also helps their game. Absolutely. You can't bring them down. You have to build them up. That's right. That's right. But uh, but it's good to face adversity, good to challenge yourself, right, Griffin? I mean, yep, for it sure. gives you something to, to strive for. gives you some goals to chase. Yep. I mean, my parents are also really um, encouraging. Mm-hmm. And I, if they weren't encouraging, then I, I don't think I would be anywhere near where I was. Right. Or, or sorry, where I am. Well, really Griffin, fortunate to have who my parents and family. Yeah. Coming up, I mean, obviously, I'm sure you looked up to Wendell quite, and you probably still do quite a bit, but is there any other shooters you've always looked up to and admired? Oh, for sure. I can name a couple of them. <laughs> I always looked up to Wendell, Tom C., Joe Finese, a lot of people like them. Mm-hmm. All, all people I still look up, look up to these days. Well, and Joe's only a couple years older than you, so it's not like, yeah, you well, know. Yeah, he's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. He's fantastic. Um, so, hey, so what's some of your favorite sporting events to, to participate in, or what disciplines do you like to participate in the most? I don't have, like, a least favorite, but I love shooting sporting clays, feet to ask. Gotcha. Those are probably two of the main ones that I, I love doing. Gotcha. But you do other, you do some trap, you do some skeet? Oh, do... I, not really trap and skeet. Okay. I, that was just. One of those things? Yeah. What I, about, do you guys do a lot of five stand up in Michigan? Yep. Do you? Do you? Okay. Use five stand. Yep. And what about AFS? Been um, we have not had an AFS event in North Michigan State. yet. Gotcha. I'm not sure if Pat is planning on putting one, but I hope he will. Okay. Well, I know that uh, Mark Baldazar would be really happy to help whoever else <laughs> yeah. with it. So, well, do you have a favorite event of the year? This year? Yeah. Any Any past years? One that you look forward to every year? Every year, I always look forward to nationals and any of the regionals. Just I love seeing meeting new people, seeing everyone that I know. Anything like that, I love. That's probably my favorite thing about the sport is meeting people because everyone's a, a great person in the sport. So. Yeah. So here's a, this is an odd one. We're just starting this question. We're going to start asking this a little bit more is what's in your bag? You know, what all do you carry on in your bag on a regular basis? Obviously my vests, glasses, and then I keep like hydration noon tablets and then like liquid IV, things you put in your water to keep it hydrated. And, nice. And Band-aids and... All the first aid stuff is what we keep in our bag, Well, just in case. You know, you you just led me into something I was going to wait to bring up, but Arma Sport, you ever heard of them? Say it again? Arma Sport, A-R-M-A. Yeah. They're, um, anybody that's been around the motocross world, Jeremy McGrath, Chad Reed, these are two big proponents of this new product that's out, and I just picked them up as a personal sponsor. And they've Did got you? a lot of hydration products. They've got some really good nutrition products, um, they got one that I'm really excited to try called Front Nine, Back Nine, and it's supposed to be, it was revolved around golfing, you know, it's to help you stay focused and energized throughout the first nine, and then you take another one before the back nine, so um, we'll have to do a little review on that once we get those in. Yeah, well, you'll have to try them out and let me know. So, And then I'll sell some to you. Will you? <laughs> Pro- probably at only double the price, I'm yeah, sure. Well, you know, you take double the amount, so. Okay, fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. <laughs> so... But no, I just I just wondered, you know, it's interesting to hear what people keep in their bag, and nobody's ever said that. So when you say you keep your hydration and your IV tablets in there, I've never heard anybody say that. So yep. it's interesting. Uh, they all have like flavors into them. So there's a ton of flavors like cherry limeade, grape, watermelon, ton of flavors like that. Awesome, and especially in the warm weather that you really need that. Yep. honestly, you can you can oh, sure. real quick. That you know what though that's a big misconception. Their hydration is just as important in the winter as it is in the summer. And sure, but I'm just a saying, lot of people don't think to drink a lot of water when it's cold out. I'm, I'm usually know? thirstier when it's ninety than when it's you know forty. Well, yeah, just but, just saying. Yep, hydration is one hundred percent one of the main keys of sporting clays. I still struggle with trying to keep hydrated. I need to work on it more, but that's one of the things that you have to do. Yeah, absolutely. So Griffin, I mean, let's talk a little bit about shooting in the SCTP versus shooting in the NSCA. I mean, I, obviously in the SCTP, you're shooting against more peers in your age yep. age group, and uh, I'm sure there's a, a wide variety, a couple years older, a couple years younger. But, I mean, and you're usually out there on the on the registered sporting course. Me and Jason see you all the time when you're down here in Ohio shooting at Cardinal or Eagle's Nest or one of the other places. I mean, as far as the competition goes for you, is there one or the other that you enjoy more or one or the other that you find more challenging? Oh, um, challenging, and I enjoy NSCA more. Okay. I don't. I actually don't shoot SCTP anymore. This is okay. last, last year was my last year shooting. Your it. last year, okay. really? Gotcha, gotcha. So, and I love shooting NSCA. Just like like the reason I said not too long ago is the people that we meet. I love meeting new people and 
talking to new people and finding out their backgrounds and you know what what they what they do for a living and stuff like that. Gotcha. That's one of the things I love. Gotcha. Well, so you stepped away from the SCTP. Are you going to shoot for or going to try and get on any college teams or anything? I've had this conversation a lot. I'm not sure if I'm going to get on a college team just because all these college teams, it seems like they want you to shoot, you know, trap, skeet, bunker trap, international skeet, and sporting clays, and I just want to focus on sporting clays. Gotcha. I don't want any other distractions, things like that. Mm-hmm. But Completely get that. Yeah, I mean, I mean if, we've... if there's a college team that would um, let me just shoot sporting clays, then for sure. <laughs> right. Well, I think the way they do that, it is it's it's like a combination effort, isn't it, for like overall yes. team score? So you got to do all the events basically to yeah. to compete. Yeah, so that yep. might be it. Might be a tough nut to crack, Griffin. But hey, you never know. There people are listening, so you might get a call. Yep. Well, we I'm just hoping. we just hope you stick with it because you know it's a common theme in sporting clays. You know, you got a kid that comes up through the ranks and he's doing really well, and he makes it to the top of the game. He goes off to college, and sporting clays is forgotten about until he's about thirty years old again. Yep, I've you seen know. that happen. Right, so. I hope you stick with it. I think you'll be, you know, you, the couple of your people that you look up to, you've mentioned, you're on track to be right there with them. Yeah, you know? I'm hoping. So well, that's yeah. good. That's that's good you have that focus. Um, What's a weird habit that you have in your routine? You know, is habits. it turning shells, pulling on your on your towel before you shoot? Do you, do you have any weird habits you picked up? This is just a funny thing. It's nothing. Yep, turning shells is one of my main things. I've done that since I began shooting was turning shells it like almost gives me ocd when they're not completely like the labels not at the direct top of your gun really yeah that's one of the things i i didn't i didn't know you did that yeah so. I, I brought that up because i know anthony does that you know but i didn't know if you did it well that's pretty cool yeah definitely that. i'll dust off an oldie but a goodie all right name one thing that has helped your shooting game like can you think of one specific thing that really like made things click for you well, that's a tough question well you got it could time be to a, think. It could be a small change. Yeah, it could be a change. It could be a tip that you receive from somebody else or something that you learn by yourself. I mean, just anything where that where it made the light bulb come on and you say, oh, my gosh, wow, that's awesome. I figured this out. Yep, I think one of the main things actually would be you have to use your eyes. Don't even look at the gun barrel because that is that will make you try to, like, aim mm-hmm. rather than point the gun. Because mm-hmm. if you, like Wendell says, try to see the rings. Mm-hmm. So, and I... I still struggle on trying not to check the gun barrel, but I'm getting better at it as I shoot more. Well, and, and that all boils down to how hard of a focus. I mean, the gun barrel is always going to be there in your peripheral vision. Right. You can't just, I, I would be interested to see if anybody can actually just block it out. But at the same time, you know, you have to have barrel awareness, but you just can't focus on it too much. Correct. Correct. So. Like, so we do the, you know, the, like the black light shooting up at Island Lake. Yeah. I saw your post on Facebook. That looked really cool. Oh like, yeah. And thank you very much for that because that post Got a certain someone here in Ohio that runs a certain club that may or may not be certainly doing that this fall. So that's all I can say. <laughs> Would that be like the pilgrim shoot? Uh, Is it possible? Possibly. <laughs> may, maybe or maybe we not. We can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to answer it like that, Griffin, because we get phone calls. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> some of them are good and some of them are angry. You're not supposed to announce that yet. You know? Yeah. So the so. black light shooting, you have absolutely no um, barrel awareness. And I like... I'm never like actually impressed with myself in my shooting sometimes, but that like actually like impressed me because I, I have no clue where the gun barrel is. Right. And if I mean if you use your eyes, then it's almost impossible to miss. That's wow. awesome. Yeah, that's that. You know, I didn't really think about that, but yeah, how in the world would you see your barrel? Yeah. It, so that that helped you for your daytime shooting. Uh, I I'm th- I think it will. Wow, that's that's cool. That's wow, that's a new revelation. That's pretty cool. Chalking your barrels. Have you ever done that? Nope. No, I did I've that never for the first that. time this now, year. Now, have you been down to the, to the Pilgrims night I, shoot? I did once, and I was okay. supposed to go this year, but COVID. I got COVID. Sure. Brought COVID home to my family, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, I, I heard that uh, Irish, Irish Spring, if you chew on that, that helps. <laughs> 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 oh, boy. Oh, that was a hilarious. It, nobody that, people that might not know what I'm talking about. Um, Mom, do you want to tell about that post you made? That was hilarious. We were all dying laughing when we read that. So... We all got oh COVID, boy. and Griffin was the one who bring it home to us, and he didn't have symptoms terribly, but he came up, and I'm making breakfast one morning, and he goes, yep, Mom, I lost my taste. He goes, I just licked the soap in the shower. <laughs> and 
I just of course you'd bring this up. Of course, Griffin. Of course, that would be you <laughs> to try. That. If, if that's what the test is going to be, yeah, I got this bar of soap here. Let me uh, yeah. Yeah. Let, let me just eat a little soap. Yeah, yeah. Right. that's yeah, funny. Completely normal, right? <laughs> uh, we've all done weird stuff that we're uh, not going to admit. Uh, so. I read that uh, I busted out laughing, and my wife looking at me, and I'm looking at my phone, and I, she's like, "What's so funny?" And I told her, and then she's laughing. You know, it was. That was priceless. Well, I will say I can taste soap now. <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> Jeez. I know you guys won't believe this, but I had my mouth washed out with that plenty of times when I was a kid. So No. <clears throat> I'm out on trying to hold Say it ain't so, yeah. Jason Rambo. But we're going to leave that alone. <laughs> so, um, Griffin, I know you listen to the show. You know all about the rapid fire questions. Yep. Want to do some rapid fire? Sure. Up for it. You, you gonna let me on this one, Sean? Or you go ahead and do it, man. You sure. I, I don't want to, you know, take that away from you. Well, you mess it up every time you do it, so so you say. <laughs> All right, Griffin, gun. He, he messed. No, wait. Hold on. Before you start, he messes up things. I just don't call him out on it. <laughs> I don't throw him under the bus when he messes up stuff. I'm well, pull- you'll never know because my wife edits these, and you won't sound like I messed up. This is true. <laughs> this is true. That's a good point. So, All, All right, right, go ahead. Go All ahead. right, Griffin, gun. I shoot a high tech S. I actually, yeah, just moved into a new gun. I shoot a high tech S. I used to shoot a MXS. Thank you. And I wouldn't be shooting this gun if it was not for Cole Gunsmithing. What length of barrel is that? Uh, 34s. 34. 34 inches. Fixed choke? Fixed choke. They're 25 25, which is IMOD. Okay. Both IMOD, top and bottom. Ported or no? No ported. No ported. Nope. Um, so, custom stock? Uh, no, not yet. I'm going to wait till, I'm, till we know I'm almost done growing. Okay. That, yeah, that make, makes perfect sense. Yeah, it makes good sense. Um, of course, I already know this, but Vester shell bag. Oh, bear belt. There you go. <laughs> uh, glasses? Uh, Pila Outlaw X7s, for okay. sure. And hearing protection? Uh, I actually use foams. I used to do a lot. I used to be all for the molded, but the more I wore the molded, the more I didn't like them. I used to grow out of them so quick, and, and they'd actually make my ears feel bruised, and I actually really like the foam earplugs now. Okay. So that's one of the main things I love. Well, when you're ready, we'll we'll get you hooked up with Doctor Grace. Oh, I yep. I'm I know you, her. You'll be you'll be glad you did. I've not so. tried hers. Yes, that that those they're fantastic. I don't. We'll, I, we'll I get to the point. I don't want to take them out. I yeah. really do. I mean, and you so. can listen to your music and stuff with them and everything off your iPhone or your Android. So can you like are they like can you, can you hear through them, like these headphones? Yep. Yeah. So you can. Yep. yep. Okay. And I know then, my. And then as soon as the bang goes off, it, it everything shuts down. Yep. My grandpa is. I think. I don't know. He has something like those. They might be out of pros. And one know, of the neat things about not to go on about them, but they're more they're more engineered like a hearing aid than are they? They are, than they are hearing protection. Okay. So they've got a lot of features of a hearing aid, and they're actually manufactured, I believe, by a hearing aid company yes. that Grace works with, and they're fantastic quality. I mean, are we, we are so impressed with them. We we love them. So, but it's you know all those features. Some people, ah, I just don't. I don't want to hear the distractions and stuff. But you could turn all that off. Yeah. Can you? Yeah. But what I'll do is I'll actually play music in my left ear. Real down, you know, down real low. What's the reason for the left ear? Because I want to be, I leave the right ear to where it's amplified. Okay. So I can hear the trapper. Oh, okay. I got you. Okay. So if they said dead pair or dead loss or, you know, no trapper bird ready, or, yeah. you know, sometimes you get a trapper that's, hold on, give me a minute. You know, I don't want to be up there calling pole and not hear what they said. So, um, and the other thing too, is if you got a trap that's concealed, Let's say it's behind some bushes or behind a tree or something. When you call pull, you can hear that trap go off. Can you? Yeah. Yes. Yep, and that's I think one that's of the a big advantage. Hard things with things like that. Or oh, I guess that, that'd be an advantage with you guys. Yeah. Not, I, I don't want to say advantage, though. It's, well, it's, it's not it, an advantage. It, it depends on how you shoot. I mean, if you're relying, I mean, you know, if your reflexes are quick enough to get on a bird, but I guess any little edge you can get, if you can hear yeah. that trap spring cranking and then the bird comes out and you're aware of it, just maybe even a half second earlier, yep. maybe that's some kind that's of. That's what. With me, with molded earplugs, when I used to grow out of them, like, um, I used to be able to hear stuff like that. But now with the foam earplugs, I, I mean, I can slightly hear it, but I still struggle a little bit with hearing it. But you just kind of, like, using your eyes, it doesn't matter if you hear it or not, for me, as long as you can see the target. Gotcha. It'll out. Gotcha. Well, and that was one of the things, too, with me. I had tried to, the molded earplugs before, but every time, because of the way I mount my gun and I got fat cheeks because I'm old and fat. But anyway, when I would roll into the comb, it would push that out. Would it? With these, they don't move. Yeah. They don't they move. stay right there. Yeah. And yeah. they're very comfortable. Very so. comfortable. Are they? So what's on your agenda this year? Any uh, Other than the Nationals, what other big shoots do you plan on traveling um, to? Well, this January, on soon in January, I'll be heading down to Florida to go to the, I think, Zoli, Jack Links, and Caribbean. Okay. And then on the way up 
to Michigan from Florida will be hitting the Gator Cup at Cherokee Rose. Nice. And then after that, World English and I don't. My mom would know some of the other shoots. I'm not. I'm not great with that. <laughs> I'm the master calendar keeper. Uh, you heard. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be hitting the regionals. Yeah. Yep, regionals, and then uh, I'm sure we can fit some in. We always like to come to Eagles Nest and. Yep, I love going to visit Eagles Dan Nest. And Christina and some Michigan shoots. Well, see, there you go. Dan's having the AFS Game Board qualifier. Is he? And yep. he's also having an AFS state championship. Well, I'll definitely have to go to there. There you go. Yep. Come shoot some AFS with us. All right. We'll do Squad it. with me, man. Let's do it again. That was fun. That was fun. Um, squad together. That brings up something else. Didn't you win the sub-junior or junior at a regional? I did. I, went, I uh, was fortunate to win the sub-junior at North Central Regionals. Okay. That was tough target. That's a big accomplishment right there. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I think so. But. So... One okay, I'm sitting here asking you a ton of questions, but when it comes to the flavor of targets, do you like big Northbrook style targets? Do you like stuff that's a little close? Do you have a preference? Everybody seems to like something different. Any target that's hittable, <laughs> I do like. <laughs> well, it's a good thing you didn't shoot the prelim at the night shoot because, according to David Radulovich, they were unhittable targets. So. <laughs> unhittable, yeah, yeah, unhittable. He hit plenty of them. Uh, yeah, with the gun upside down over his head. So, but no, there was nothing particular you like better than others. Well, I do like some like I don't know, I don't know what like seventy seventy plus yard batus. I don't know what about them. I like shooting them, even though they're challenging sometimes. I, really? I don't, I don't, hard to hit. I don't think anybody likes seventy yard batus. That's well, a big boy I target. Do. That's right? a big boy target. That's a big boy target. I yeah. think I think they're fun to shoot. Well, they're fun to shoot at. Let's put it that way. Hats. They're fun to shoot at. There you go. Hitting them is a whole other matter. <laughs> well, maybe you need to start taking lessons from Griffin. I might have to. Yes. I might have to. Well, see, there you go. He squads with us, and you can shoot behind him and see what he's doing. Well, I can definitely see over top of him. Oh, oh yeah. You, you can, can see over top of a building, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> so, but Griffin, do you have, I'm sure you have some sponsors or some people that help you out you'd like to thank. I, w- I would like to thank um, Mrs. and Mr. Roden. From Bear Pelt. Yes. Starting there. And um, obviously Dwight and Doug from Game Boy. Mm-hmm. They've been a huge help, and they've helped me getting hooked up with, like I did lessons with Tom and then a clinic with David, and and then they helped me hook up with, with uh, Wendell too. That's so awesome. So that's another thing. And then Rich and John Cole, they're awesome people. Yes, they I are. I want to thank them too. From Cole Gunsmithing, they're awesome. Very nice people. Yep, they're awesome. Well, I'm trying to think of anything else I could ask Griffin. We've kind of gone around the horn on just about everything. I could sit here all day and ask him questions. Well, yeah, we could we could shoot the breeze. That's for sure. Yeah, but well, Griffin, thank you very much. Yep, for thank you guys for bringing me on here. Uh, no, it was our pleasure. And uh, yep, before you leave, you we got to have you guys sign the flag. So yes, well, Griffin is looking at big signature. Oh, he's already got his on there. Nice, sweet, good deal, good deal. Always nice to have people in the podcast room. Yes, for sure. Thank you guys. No, I'm happy to make the trip down here. Our pleasure. Had a lot of fun. It's probably nice to come down to a cool state. Yeah. Never mind. I better leave that alone. Oh, geez. Really? I mean, come on, it's man. A place up north, man. What would I tell you about being polite to our guests? <laughs> really? Come on. It's cold. We've it's had cold this, Michigan. We've had this talk. Yeah. Well, Griffin, thank you very much. Yep, Is there anything that we didn't cover that you wanted to bring up or talk about? Um, Not that I can think of. Mom, Dad, you have anything any thoughts? you want to cover? No. We just appreciate what you guys do. Getting yep. this uh, out for... Uh, for the general public, I think is huge, and 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 what you guys do for uh, for the sport is is uh, is great. So we appreciate what you guys do. Well, Thank we, you. We appreciate yep. that. I always yeah. enjoy listening to you guys' podcast. Thank you. Thanks, Griffin. You appreciate guys are awesome. It. You make my work day go by uh, much easier <laughs> when I'm sitting at my desk. Well, we we had have you on. we had some anger during the Christmas week and the week of New Year's because we didn't release a podcast oh, those two weeks. Like, I'm dying over here. I haven't heard a podcast in two weeks. Like, hold on, we're, it's coming. I it's got a coming. few. I got a few of those emails, and it's like, damn, Christmas. We just wanted a vacation. Yeah, I know. I slave mean, drivers. <laughs> yeah, I know. Cracking the whip. <laughs> right. But now it's it's a lot of fun, a lot of work, but definitely learned a lot over we, over the last oh, yeah. year. And uh, we're just glad we can help people. Yeah, we're humbled, abs- absolutely humbled by the the, uh, the response that we've had. And we really appreciate everybody that listens to the show. And it's always our pleasure to have people like you on the show and, and thank get, you guys get, for get your me message out. out to everybody. Awesome. Well, Griffin, Sean, yep. Mom, Dad, thank you. Yep, thank thank you, you all very we'll much. See, we'll see you out on the course very soon. Yep.
You know, Sean Griffin and his parents are just just awesome people. Oh, they're fantastic. Some of the nicest people you meet out there. Absolute, uh, we say it all the time, ambassadors of the sport. Yes, for sure. I'm glad that they got to sit down with us. Um, now that they're gone, we got to give Maddie McFarland a call. Yeah, another great name, an up-and-coming shooter. We uh, caught up with her at the Game Boy Invitational in Arkansas. And, wow, what a fantastic young lady. Yes, good people, too. Yeah. So let's give her a call real quick. All righty. All right, joining us on the phone, Maddie McFarland. Maddie, how are you doing tonight? Good. How about you? Uh, we're doing great. Jason's here with me. I bet you it's a lot colder here than it is there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll probably win that bet. Yeah, you're down in New Mexico, correct? Yes, it is. It's kind of cold here. <laughs> is really? It? What's the temperature? Yeah. Um. Right now, it's right now it's 43. It's 43 right now. Oh, well, you pour it was 15 this morning. You, yeah. poor, you poor thing. It's at 18 on the way here on my dashboard. So, <laughs> so Maddie, um, I know we've talked to you before briefly, um, at the game board invitational. Um, can you give us a quick rundown for our listeners that haven't heard from you yet? Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, how you got started into sporting clays. Um, uh, my name is Madison McFarland, but I go by Maddie. Um, I'm 12 years old. Um, I kind of started, got into shooting. My kind of, my family kind of started it, and all of them mostly shoot. My sister started shooting when she was around eight or nine. Um, I, my dad's been shooting for a while now. Uh, I started with Rimfire Challenge when I was six years old, and I went till about eight, and then I kind of just went with the flow, and we were at Ben Avery. And I, that's where I shot my very first target at. And I just fell in love with it ever since. Nice. Very common story that we hear with a lot of people. So um, we talked to you at the, again, at the Game Board Invitational. Uh, me and Jason watched you shoot. You're definitely a very talented shooter. And it uh, looks like you're going to be one of the up-and-comers. Uh, now, you compete both in the SCTP and the NSCA, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. Do you have a favorite event? I mean, what are you, sporting clays, fee task? My favorite event would probably be sub gauge because it's most like to just to goof off and have fun. And <laughs> okay. I don't want anyone to get mad at me for saying this, but me and my dad just go out there and goof off. Don't really care about the score and just have fun. And it's kind of just to get your mind off what's coming tomorrow or you've already shot and just to relax and have fun. Well, that's a good thing to go by. I don't think there's any problem with that. You, Jay? No, I think that's awesome. Uh, that's the best part of this sport having fun. Maddie, do you have a coach that you work with, or is it just dads uh, right now? Yes. Uh, my coach is Ray Brown, a.k.a. known as Thunder. Um, we have <laughs> – he's known me since I probably about shot my first target. The first lesson I had with him, he was an awesome coach. I mean, he was fun. He wasn't mad or anything. He just guided me along and put me to the right direction. And I went to the Western Regional right after that. And I took mostly first place in everything. And I took white flyer high overall. Nice. Very nice. Speak, you know, Sean brought up a couple of times here that we met you at the Game Board Invitational. That had to be a pretty big feeling of accomplishment to make it to that. Can, can you tell us a little bit about the journey and going to the, to, through the AFS ranks and making it to the Invitational? Uh, yeah. So my dad, I, we, we went to mostly all the regionals except for Georgia and we also went to the national championships. My dad tried to squeeze me in um, in AFS as much as possible. And AFS was so much fun. It's new, and I love to try things new. Some parkours I had bad scores, but some of them I had good road ones, and that's what got me there. And I had a lot of fun at the Game Boy Invitation. Gotcha. Well, Maddie, I want to circle back. So you compete both in the SCTP and in the NSCA. Are there other uh, kids your age uh, that are also competing in the NSCA, or is that kind of a rarity where you're at? I don't know anyone that competes in the NSCA that is in my age or is from here, but I know some kids who shoot SCTP and who also shoot NSCA, but I would really like for kids to shoot NSCA from here. I think it would be a great time for them. Yeah, we uh, we talked to Griffin Howe earlier, and he said much the same thing. I mean, I realize for younger people it may be a little bit intimidating to go out there and compete against adults, 
But the real yeah. the reality of it is is that you guys have just as much chance to beat us, and usually you do. <laughs> That's the scary part, especially with Griffin. <laughs> I know he's kicked our butts a couple times. Um, you know, so hopefully, you know, if you're a youth shooter and you're listening to this, uh, Maddie and Griffin both are, are good examples of younger people who are out there mixing it up with adults anywhere from, you know, 20 something to uh, 60 or 70 something years old, or even maybe even older. Um, and you all have good competition. I mean, you, you, you can go out there and compete and you don't have to feel bad about uh, your performance. Usually you guys are doing very well. So hopefully you'll get the word out and get more people involved in the NSCA side. Yeah, I think that would be awesome. Matty, do you have, I mean, you know, you, you said you went to most of the regionals. Is there a, a shoot every year that you look forward to or one that's, that's your favorite? I have three, actually. Um, my number one would probably be national championships because everyone's there. Everyone's having a good time. You get to see people who usually don't see. Everyone comes in from, like, different states and countries and it's just so awesome and the targets are amazing there and it's just a lot of fun my second one would probably be m&m i went there this year for my very my first time and it was a definitely a different scenery because where i'm from all we have is dirt we don't have green no trees nothing and we went out there it was all green it was a beautiful place and the targets were amazing and it was just so much fun and my third one would probably be Houston. Houston, <laughs> the only thing I don't like there is about the humidity. It's terrible. <laughs> but they are not scared to throw any kind of target. And it's always a great time. We always have so much fun. I love that place. Gotcha. Well, with traveling around as much as it sounds like you've done, it, I bet you've met a lot of people in the sport. Have you met other youth shooters and have you gotten uh, you know, relationships started with some of them? Um, you know, I try to talk to as much youth shooters youth shooters as possible some of them they're awesome they're amazing and some of them i have not met yet but they're coming they're like new to the sport and i want to talk to them and get them more interested in the sport and have fun gotcha you have something jason uh i was just gonna move on to uh that weird new question we're asking now uh it's called what's in your bag so Everybody's got something funny that they keep in their bag. Maybe it's a little, you know, a voodoo rabbit's foot or, or something funny. Do you have anything, Maddie, that you carry regularly with you that... Uh, good, um, good luck charm. Yeah, a little lucky rabbit's foot. What do they... What do you call... Superstition. There you go. That's the word I was looking for. Okay. Uh, actually, I do. So, funny story. Me and my dad were out on the range, and it was super windy, and I had no, I had no hair ties, no headbands, no nothing. And But I had a pair of thermals on me for my pants. And my dad took his knife and cut off a, a leg and put it on my head. And I carry it everywhere with me now. And it's a <laughs> rag, honestly. That's funny. Hey, it's all about functionality, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Maddie, um, what's, what are some of your favorite accomplishments? And do you have any big goals for 2022? Uh, my favorite accomplishment would probably be beating my dad that's a <laughs> nice. I've been for, for so long heck yeah my goal for 2022 would probably to have the most fun and to win yeah win and just have fun and go out there and put a smile on my face and that's it and just win well, and Dad, I know you're sitting there close by to the phone. I'm sure that uh, on one hand, you don't like to get beat, but at the other other hand, it's definitely a proud moment, isn't it? I cried like a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> Brutally true honest. Story. Uh, true story. True story. Uh, it really it caught me off guard, and I didn't give it to her at all. I mean, it was, you know, I was doing whatever I could to, get, you know, break as many targets as I could. And, yeah. You know, she kicked my butt, and I cried like a little girl. <laughs> that's awesome. I was uh, so proud. That's great. That's that's fantastic. And now, Dwayne, you're in master class, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. See, that's that's no <laughs> that's no joke, right there. That's a tall order, right? I mean, twelve year old girl, and she just beat her dad. It's in master's class. Yep. That's well, a, that's I'm, a great accomplishment. I'm not the I'm not the only master class shooter she's beat. Well, I'll bet not. I've seen that girl shoot. There's no doubt in my mind. Yeah. You so, know, it's you know she she loves to call people out and take them up on the make or break stand and you know go mano a mano with them you know well you just you just reminded me next time i'm down at nationals go hide from her around the make or break 
<laughs> right. <laughs> so I don't get embarrassed. <laughs> right. Exactly. You know, it's kind of a funny story. You know, she's she's called out a few, a few of them and gone up there and, and beat them. And, you know, the kind of the first time it happened was, you know, I hate to call him out, but it was with Chad Roberts. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I wish I could have right. seen that. And I, I think this was in, uh, where was this at? Was this in? This was at Eminem out in New Jersey. And, you know, she goes, I want to shoot with him. I was like, well, go ask him if you want to go up there and shoot. You know, and before she went up there and I said, look, I go, Madison, if you're going to call him out and you're going to go up there to shoot, I go, you go to war. I go, you don't go up there. This is not fun. I said, you go up there and take it to him and show him what you got. Heck yeah. You know, and I think Chad, Chad was going up there, you know, in his defense. He was up there, you know, I'm just going to go shoot with this young lady and have some fun. And, you know, there was two different mindsets happening at that shoot, you know, for for at least, you know, the first seven targets. <laughs> and then it, it and then the mindset kind of changed. And Chad even Chad looked at her. I mean, I've got the video on her Facebook page and Chad looked at her and said, why are you not playing for the money? Yeah. He, goes, I, he told her, he goes, I will pay your entry fee, you know, and, uh, you know, she just. You know, she's Ray Brown's her coach, you know, and Madison knows how to hit the long bird, you know, and she had that number seven target. I mean, she had its number and she just smacked that thing time and time and time again and just, you know, took it to it. Well, Madison, did did you happen to notice a look of fear on Chad's face at one point or another? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Chad was an amazing sport. He he was kind of funny because my dad was when I up there and I'm competing against someone, I have the mindset of, oh, like, you're going down. I got to win. This, this is my time to shine. And people underestimate me sometimes because of how old I look and how old I am. But most, mostly I just have – I go out there and have a good time. And Chad was – he was amazing. He was very funny up there. And my dad was recording it, and it was hilarious. That's awesome. I have I have a very hard time shooting with Chad because I'm I'm usually cracking up too much to take anything serious. <laughs> yeah, he's a character, he's, that's for sure. He's a lot of fun. Chad is very funny. Yes, he's a good guy too. So, gotcha. um, well, Sean, are you going to ask her some rapid fire questions? Yeah, Maddie, you I'm sure you've heard the show, so you know about all about the rapid fire. Are you ready to go on these? Yeah, I am. Okay, let's do it. Uh, tell everybody about your gun. Uh, I have a K80 30-inch barrel, and I love my gun. I've never had any problems with it. And if there's a problem, Kemble, DuPont, and they fix it right away, and they are amazing people. Gotcha. Now, do you have fixed chokes or screw-in chokes? I have screw-in chokes. And uh, as most of you guys know, I'm sponsored by Jimmy Muller. And Jimmy Muller is an amazing guy, and... They're so easy to clean out and so easy to screw in. I've never had any problems with them. And if you guys have a problem with them, call Jimmy and Muller Chokes, and they will fix them right away for you. Gotcha. What's your go-to constriction when you're shooting sporting clays? Number twos. Number twos. Okay, and that's kind of like their light mod, right, if I'm not mistaken? Well, I think it's light yes. mod mod. Yeah, somewhere yeah, in that somewhere, range. Yeah. Uh, okay, how about your stock? Do you have a custom stock or just a factory stock? I have a custom stock. Uh, by Mike Lupul uh, at SNS Stocks Plus. Okay. He is hands down the best gun fitter ever. He's an amazing guy, and he has been working on my stock for a while now. My dad, he's been he's been with my dad forever, and he I've never heard anything bad about him, and he's just amazing. Cool. Okay, now uh, vest or shell bag. Uh, I have a vest. I have a Castellini vest, but I'm hoping to get a bear pelt vest here soon. Gotcha. Nice. Not a girl. Uh, what about your shooting glasses? I have Pila's X7. Okay. And what about your hearing protection? Just normal plugs. Okay. And last but not least, what kind of shells do you like to use? What's your recipe? I like to use cleaver or whatever I can get my hands on, but I've actually started using game bore and game bore ammo is just, I love it. And it's shoots amazing. It breaks targets and it's just awesome. What's your load? Do you go like a seven and a half, eights, one ounce, ounce and an eighth? One ounce, eight. One ounce, eight. Gotcha. That's a good combo. Awesome. Uh, any other sponsors you want to thank or mention before we uh, wrap this up? 
uh you know it'd probably be my mom <laughs> there, there you go <laughs> <laughs> she's always been on my side she's always there to team me up and most of all she makes me go into the sport with a positive attitude and have a good time and she's always working with me and to get my ammo if I ever need it I call her mammo if I ever need ammo and she just if I'm having a bad day she's always there to just cheer me up and put a smile on my face that's great. Well, mom and dad never do get enough credit, do they? <laughs> well, hats off to both of them because they made a heck of a shooter and a very respectful young lady in you. And we very much appreciate you spending some time with us, Maddie. Yeah, and we're looking forward to seeing what you're going to do out on the course this year. Yes. Thank you. Awesome. Well, Jason, anything else you want to ask? I don't think so. We covered a lot of the other little stuff when we uh, caught up with her at the – AFS Invitational. Right, in Arkansas. But I'm glad, Maddie, that you took some time to catch back up with us here. So I think this is really cool to have both you and Griffin on one show, uh, you know, the rising stars, if you will, of the sport. And uh, I think it's awesome, and I wish you the best of success this year. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Well, you guys have a wonderful evening. It was great talking to both of you. Hopefully we'll see you out on the course sometime soon this year. It was great talking to you, too, and I had an awesome time. All right, guys. We'll talk to you later. All right, bye. Bye-bye. All right, on the phone with us is TJ Knight. What's up, TJ? Huh? So, TJ, tell us a little bit about you. Where are you from? I'm from Winsboro, South Carolina, and I've been shooting for about three years. How old are you? 11 years old. 11 years old. What class do you shoot in, TJ? C-class. C-class. And you, what kind of gun do you shoot? A Beretta Silver Pigeon. Nice. Gotcha. So, now, you are a big fan of Rhino Chokes. Am I right? Yes, sir. And what, what products do you have from, from Rhino? Um, I, got, I got a shirt, I got a hat, and I got their chokes. You got their chokes? Do you, yes, run, the, do you run the Elite Series <laughs> chokes? Or do you run the... the um, so you got the Gen 1s and the Gen 2s, right? Yeah. So you got the Gen 1s, yeah. Gen 2s, and the Elites, I think. Gen 2. Gen 2. You run Gen 2. That's cool. Gotcha. So, what's, what's your go-to constriction when you're out shooting a tournament? I think I'd pick the 7s. The 7s? You like the 7s the best? Yes, sir. Gotcha. Because I feel like I can shoot a 10-yard target and a 50-yard target. <laughs> yeah, they're they're great. I mean, for a 7, they're surprising. Uh, they'll, they'll break a target a lot farther than you think they will, won't they? Yes, sir. Gotcha. Um, so, if uh, let's let's talk a little bit about the chokes and rhino. Uh, how long have you been shooting them? Oh, about a year. Okay. And uh, what did you go to before? Did you Were you just using the Beretta factory chokes, or were you using something different? I was using Pure Goals. Okay. And what made you make the switch to Rhinos? Well, one day we were out practicing with um, some chokes that we were using, and uh, we were on Station 5, and I noticed a welt in my barrel. So I looked at my dad, and I said, Dad, what is this? And he said, I don't know. We looked at it, and we took it to Mike Longo, and he said, it looks like the choke field, and my gun blew up. So oh. we had to get a whole new gun. So oh, jeez. Wow. That's terrible, man. That's bad news for anybody. Yes, sir. So, TJ, do you think the chokes have helped your shooting a little bit? Yes, sir. And, and how do you think they've helped your shooting? Just give you more confidence, or do you think they pattern better? Well, I think they pattern better because I noticed some improvement in my shooting when we went to the U.S. Open and I shot a 190. Oh, wow. Nice. Very nice. <laughs> That's a good score. That is very good Definitely score. Definitely a good score. Well, your dad just sent me some stats here recently. You just shot a 95 at a tournament somewhere. Yeah. And uh, the last shoot that I went, I shot a 99 with him. Very wow. nice. <laughs> you ain't gonna, you're not going to be in C-class very, very long, are you? <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> well well tj if, if some if somebody's thinking about buying some rhino chokes what would you say to them they're good for they're good hunting chokes too they're good at uh, sports wise and they're good at hunting okay because me and my dad i shot a limit on us every time we wow with them. Nice. that's that's super cool <laughs> well, well good good stuff man i tell you what tj i appreciate you guys coming on here and talking to us a little bit and we want to wish you the best in 2022 for your shooting thank you thanks play we'll talk to you soon okay all right thanks, all right thanks tj bye-bye all right bye 
All right, on the phone with us for this Bear Pelt segment is Nick Welch. Nick, what's up, man? Nothing much. I'm just uh, hanging out at the gun club right now on a great Saturday morning. Ready to shoot some clays. <laughs> well, Nick, for all of our listeners, can you tell a little bit about who you are and where you're from? Uh, I'm Nick Welch. I'm a junior shooter from a uh, uh, Dallas, Texas area. Uh, I've been shooting for four years now, and I'm a master class shooter. I shoot a lot in SCA, but I also shoot a lot for uh, SCTP. Awesome. Gotcha. So how did you first hear about bear pelt vest, or what made you decide that you needed to get a bear pelt? First time I ever heard about the bear pelt vest was uh, actually on Instagram. I saw it on uh, uh, David Rudovich's uh, Instagram, and uh, he was plugging in it pretty heavily. And uh, I saw it, and I started looking at him, and I started seeing all the cool designs and started looking into it a little more. And then uh, when I went to CTP Nationals last year at Marengo, Ohio, I uh, – went in and you know went in and talked to some of the guys and uh tried a couple vests on and uh you know here i am now uh bought one and uh, i love it awesome well now that you've had it what what's your favorite feature of the vest or what what do you like best about it the thing i like the best i think is the the non-slip material it makes it great for uh you know uh feet task mainly i love it for the mount uh i don't get caught up like i did with my old vest and uh Probably the second best thing is the large pocket sizes, uh, especially for feet tasks. I can load up, you know, a box and a half of shells, and you don't have to worry about running out. Gotcha. Now, Nick, did you do a, a custom design? Can you explain a little bit how your vest looks? So I don't have quite a custom design. I went and uh, picked it out from a uh, – they've got a large selection of different patterns and colors, and uh, I've got a – it's got a light blue vest, and I've got these uh, – it's got the cool little swirls and stuff on the gri- on the side. It's like a like gray, and, gray and white. And I've got uh, my local gun club on the back and clay shooter supply. Nice. Awesome. Let me ask you this, Nick. I'm sure some of your buddies have kind of been on the fence about, ah, you know, I don't know. I've got this other kind of vest. If somebody's on the fence about buying one, what do you say to them? Well, for one, the comfortable or the comfortability of it is just unlike none other. I mean, it, it really clings to your body like nothing like that a vest ever has. It's more like a shirt with a pad on it. And so the way that it uh it hugs your body when you're wearing just a uh like you know a polo shirt or a t-shirt and the way it also does it if you're wearing a jacket or anything it's just it's unmatchable. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, well Nick, thank you for spending a couple of minutes with us. Um now I'm going to put you on the spot here. You know the you know the tagline, right? It's not your new vest, it's your uniform. It's not just your vest, it's your new uniform. That's close we, enough. I'll give him yeah. I'll give him points for that. Yeah, there you go. Good job. <laughs> Well, Nick, thank you again, man. We appreciate it very much, and uh, we look forward to running into you at a club here soon. Will do. All right. All right. See you, Nick. Great talking with you. Thanks, buddy. Uh-huh. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Well, I tell you what, the sport is looking bright with young people like that on their way up, right? Yeah. You know, it's not just what they've accomplished. I think it's really cool that they're both going to be great ambassadors for the sport. Mm-hmm. You know, you look at Joe Finese and how respectful he is and how – just everything he says, he sounds like he's 10, 15 years older than what he is. Right. And these kids are, you know, no disrespect to Griffin or Maddie calling them kids, but they are. They're kids, and they're already talking like Joe. Yeah, yeah. They're right so, on his coattails, and they're they're both great people, have great fam- parents and great families. And, uh, you know, and they're competing not only in the uh, SCTP, but they're out there against all the big right. dogs in the NSCA. You know, a lot of people... Some people, we've heard grumblings. You know, you've heard it, Sean. Oh, we've sure. gotten emails about us having younger shooters on. But you know what? It's the future of this sport. That's right. You better get used to it. That's right. You know, because whether you're 70, 80, whatever, this is who you're going to be seeing. Well, and, let, and let's face it. Some of the greatest shooters in the sport right now started at a very young age. I mean, David, Anthony. Tom C. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can go on. Yeah, I mean, so. there's, there's a lot of them out there that started at a very young age. And you just have such an ability with a younger mind, a younger body to really hone your skill yeah. to where it becomes natural. Right. You know, it's just a reflexive action and they're out there shooting lights out all the time. This is once again, why I wish we had never stepped away from the sport. Well, we can't go back in time. You I know? don't, I don't own a DeLorean time machine. Do you? <laughs> Let me call Doc Brown. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Hey, listen, we have got some questions for the coaches coming up on YouTube. So if you have not already subscribed, get over there, get subscribed to our YouTube channel. That's right. Absolutely. Keep those questions coming. Visit our YouTube channel. Watch those videos. We'll have more throughout the year. Uh, hopefully this will be a big benefit to people because most of the coaches we've talked to are really excited about this. They can actually visually show you 
what they're talking about or what they're discussing versus trying to talk to it, uh, talk it over the air and try to explain it through verbal communication. Right. And thank you very much. Bear Pelt, Atlas, Odo Pro, Negrini, Rhino Chokes, RE Ranger, Game Boy US, KL Ammo, and White Flyer. Absolutely. And everybody, take somebody out shooting, take somebody out to a tournament, go to a charity event. Just get somebody out with a gun in their hand and have fun. That's all we need you to do for this sport. Absolutely. And Sean, until next week, we'll see you back here on the Dead Pair Podcast.